Okay, this video is going to take us through some notes to finish up section 3.1 and uh, move on to section 3.2 in the textbook. And so we're, we have page three, three of our notes, which uh, you're supposed to have received in class. If you didn't, then it, it's available um, in the assignment here, so you can print that out. Um, so um, we take a look at the brace layout, which we've actually talked about in class, but one thing I didn't show you um, is something else so relating to that. So notice under the if, we do have the two braces are in line with the I in if. Now something else that some programs do, a lot of programmers do actually from what I see, is that um, they will go if floor, um, I forgot parentheses, if floor is greater than 13, um, and then they'll put the opening brace at the end of the, the if line. And then they'll go down and uh, indent. And then floor um, is assigned floor, oh, come on, gee whiz, minus 1. And then they'll put the closing brace here. All right, uh, that drives me crazy, um, but that is what some people do. What we want to do is we want to do like what we have up here, what we're showing up here. Uh, this will not, of course, obviously the compiler doesn't care in this kind of situation, but let's have our braces line up with the if, the word if. And the other thing is um, we, let me see. So the thing is that we need to always use braces, number two. Always use the braces. Um, there, if there is a situation where you have a lot of code um, and a lot of one line, we've talked about this already that in, in page two uh, where we said braces are not required if a branch contains just one statement. If you have a, a long section of code that has only one line in each branch, um, you, at that point, you can skip your, your curly braces. Most of the stuff we do, it's better just to keep the curly braces in. It's easier to read. Uh, it really is. And so let's keep using the braces. Um, a common error is putting, so number three, a common error is putting the semicolon after the if uh, condition. And so here's the if condition right here, uh, or the condition is in the parentheses. And so here's your condition, and then they put the semicolon there. And that's going to produce a syntax error where it will say else without if. Else without if. And um, I'm not really going to explain that, but that's when you see that else without if, chances are you've done a, um, a semicolon at the end of the if condition. Um, avoid um, duplication number four avoid duplication in branches and so they give a good example in the textbook um, right here um, if so you notice here it says if the floor is greater than 13 then so what this particular program does here is it stores the actual floor amount and then it prints it and then in the second branch it you know this is a different um, calculation of what the actual floor is, stores the floor in there, and then it does the same print statement as up here. These are the same. That's a duplication. And then so that prints it if uh, the else branch is executed. A more efficient way of coding, and if you just look at these, if you look at the difference between these, what this looks like overall and what this looks like overall, this is much cleaner here. This is cleaner because it doesn't have as much code in the branches. And so what we do then, if you notice, and some, for sometimes situations, you're going to find that's a natural tendency is to, to you type a line of code here and go, oh, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. And then when, when you step back and look at it, you go, oh, wait, this is duplication. Then at that point, just take that line of code out and put it after the if statement. Okay, remember, this is the if statement, this whole thing. And so you just take it out, put it out here, cleans up the branches, 
and it's less code, more efficient. All right, that's something to look for. Uh, let's see here. Let's move on to section 3. Point. Now, this is section 3.2 in the textbook. So anything that you're not clear about in the, through the video with the notes, you can always look at the textbook and um, see if it, it will help you, give you better explanation. Um, so now, when we are asked to write conditions, uh, the, the word problems, the wording in those narratives, um, those problems, don't always say, well, if x is greater than or equal to, or if num3 is less than, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it doesn't always use those terms. And so sometimes it will give you a different um, terminology, just normal talk. So, let's, so we want to write the condition uh, for num1 is at least 15. And so we want to go, and if you need help with that, you know, you can go if and then go, um, then do your parentheses because that's really what it's asking you to do because uh, that's where the, the condition is used. So um, let's say that we want, that we want to, num1, we want to see is, uh, is num1 at least, 15. Now this is pseudo code I have inside here now, but we want to replace this with Java code. What does this mean if num1 is at least 15? Um, so uh, here's uh, some ways to think about it. Um, now some of you will be able to think, okay, I got it, and others will struggle and go, I don't, I don't know, not for sure, or guess. And so here we go. What I would do, if you, here's your boundary. Remember we used the term boundary. And so 15 is your boundary. And so what I would do is just go one above and one below. And um, then try to interpret this. Now num1 is at least 15, so you check 14. Is 14 at least 15? And if you need to, um, do I have at least 14 cookies? With, if I have 14 cookies. Well, no, you don't. So you know that this is not going to work. And then you go, is 15 at least 15? Well, yes, it is. And is 16 at least 16? So these two work. Uh, so that now you can see that you this is equal to, this is greater than, and this is less than. So you can see right here that your code is going to be Num, the question is, is num1 greater than or equal to? Greater than or equal to? There you go. All right, let's t try another one. Um, is, let's see. The other one is, is, not, is num1, or, or the, the condition is num1 is, um, 15 or more. Now this one might be a little bit easier, um, but if you go back to this and all right, so the, is 14 fi, is as much as 15 or more? No, it's not. How about is 15 15 or more? So it is 15 and is 16 um, 15 or more. So it is more. So you have this is the more and this is 15 is 15. So this is really going to be the same thing. Num1 is greater than or equal to. You can see that it's greater than or equal to. All right. So then let's look at another one. Um, let's try. Uh, num1 is no more. Oops. Num1 is no more than 15. Oh boy, how can this happen? All right, and so let's, oh gee whiz, I'm having a hard time with this computer, with my abilities here. Num1 is no more than 15. Okay, so if, now, by the way, I'm just putting if here just to make it easier to understand what we're doing here. but. If I'm saying write the condition, the, all I'm asking is this part of it. Uh, but sometimes it helps to think if, 
blah, blah, blah. So if num1 is no more than 15, well, what is num1 is no more than 15? So you go, is 14 no more than 15? 14 is not more than 15. So that means this is good. Is 15 not more, no more or not more than 15? Well, no, 15 is not more than 15. So therefore, that's good. Is 16 not more or no more than 15? Well, actually, it is more than 15. But we want it to be no more than 15. And so therefore, 15 is the highest it can be. So you can see you've got a an equals and you've got a, a less than. And so your code is going to be um, num1 is less than or equal to 15. All right, let's try num1 is 0. Now, if you want to try these out first and then check to see if you got it right, that would be a great idea. So num1 is 0. Well, um, this would help if you go is put is or if in front of that. Is num1 or if num1 is 0. So we're trying to check that out. So num1, whenever you're trying to evaluate if something is equal to another, you've got to use the double equal sign. That's relationship. If you go, if you go like this, then what you're doing is you're assigning 0 to num1. And that's not what it's saying. It's trying to figure out if or to see if num1 is equal to 0. So when you're evaluating the equality, when you evaluate equality of two things, two operands, then it's double equal sign. All right. And then another one, uh, num1 is not is not 7. All right, so this one, is num1 not 7? Well, some students are going to try to go, well, if it's not 7, it could be greater than 7 or it could be less than 7. Oh, no, what do I do? Well, what we're going to do is we're, we have a very nice little relational operator. It's called um, not equal to. This is the situation that where you would use this. As long as num1 is not 7, you win the game, you know, or you win the your turn. So this would be a time that you can use that. Is num1 not equal to 7? All right, so that's how that works. Uh, those are just some examples. Opposite. Opposite is actually a very good concept to cover um, because um, it's, it is complicated. Not everybody gets it right away. And so um, it's not necessarily natural. And so, um, so let's go opposite. Of. Okay, so the question is, what is the opposite of num1 is greater than 6? What's the opposite of num1 is greater than 6? And you might go, your first thought is going to be, is uh, how about num1 less than 6? That's obvious, Mr. Bath. Um, how could you ask this question? Okay, num1, or num is greater than 6. Me, okay, let's just take... 6, um, 7, 8, and then, so again, we this is a boundary, so we have the boundary, and then we put numbers above and below it. Okay, so when we're saying num is, what's the opposite of num is greater than 6? Well, here you go. Let's go like this. Well, what are the numbers greater than 6? 7. 8, 9, etc., right? Well, the, what's the opposite of this? Well, it's going to be everything else. This is everything else. Well, so the opposite 
you say you say it's num one num is less than six. Well, that's not the opposite because that includes just five and down. But what about six? So therefore the opposite of greater than six has to be num is equal, less than or equal to six. All right, it's got to be less than or equal to this, this six. All right, so you, what you should be able to do is on your own, you should be able to go, uh, what's the opposite? That didn't work. What is the opposite of num one is less than four? So do that on your own. And hopefully you put num one is greater than or equal to four. All right, how about what is the opposite of num one is less than or equal to six? Well, actually, if you just think of the opposite way here, so, oh, I didn't want to do that. Um, so if we have, again, we have six, seven, eight, and then five and four. And so, well, less than or equal to six is going to be the five, the four, or equal to, that's the six. So what's the opposite of that? It's everything else. And all these numbers are actually greater than six. So this one is num one is greater than six. That's the opposite. All right, then uh, you should be able to do, well, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, Let's see. Okay, yeah, let's let's stop with that. That's the idea. And sometimes, I, I, if you're not sure, please don't guess. Please don't guess. Make a list. And uh, the key thing is, is that you need to um, have your boundary. You put a boundary, and then you put numbers above, and you put numbers below, and then you go, okay, what does the original include, and what's left? What's the remaining or the other? Uh, end of it. And so uh, that's going to be the key. All right, let's go to our last thing, um, and that is um, comparing strings. So um, let's just say that we have uh, these. Oh, let's just say we have this. Let's say you have these declarations. And you want to compare, and, and we're going to, we'll do some programs where you're going to see the use of this, but we want to compare uh, state one and state two. Um, so if you went, for instance, if, um, now what we want to do, this is what we want to do. When we want to go state, is state one, oh, come on, equal to state two. Um, so let's see, let's go like this. Okay, so this is what you want to do, but this is not right. The compiler, um, compiler um, does not see a problem. And I have a whole thing that I go through, which I'm not going to go through here. Um, on why, um, but, and maybe at some point I will explain this, but not today. All I want you to see is that when you come to a string, do not use a relational operator um, like we've been using. These operators that we've talked about prior to this are for numerical data, or numeric data. So relational operators um, that we've gone through, the six relational operators, those are for numeric data data. So when you have a string, there's a different way. And here's the, the thing, is you may think, oh, everything's just fine, because the compiler does not give you an error message. And so um, that's the danger of this. You might think, well, so what's the big deal? But so don't do this. Um, this is um, no, no, no. Okay, so don't do this. What we want to do 
is we're going to use a different relational operator, so to speak. I don't know if these are – this is not really a op, relational operator. This is going to uh, be a, um, a method. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do is we want to see does state 1 uh, equal state 2. In other words, is Arizona the same as Arizona? And so we go that we go the name of the variable that's storing a string, and we go dot equals, and then in parentheses you have the other variable that's storing the string, and then you got to make sure you get that extra um, parenthesis in there. Parenthesis. So now this is comparing this. Then what this does is compares. Uh, the string from state 1 with the string um, I'm just going to go in because that's they're really in they're the contents the string in state 2 okay it, that's what it's doing oh god I can't even do this right let me see there you go no Okay, I'm going to pause this and see what's going on here. Okay, so this compares the string in state 1 with the string in state 2. And so another way to put it is that it's going is Arizona Let's let's put it this way. Does Arizona match Arizona in spelling and capitalization? Okay, that this is important that you have this written down. If I check your note, well, I'm going to check your notes. If I look at your notes, you don't have this written down. That's going to be a problem. Because you have to understand, this is not just looking at the spelling. It's also looking at the capitalization. And if, the, if either one of those don't match, then they are not equal. All right, so that's critical. Okay, so another uh, way this could be done. Now, you, these, of course, obviously, these can, we could go is state 2 dot equals state 1. Okay, you can... Mix those up. Let me show you some other things you can do. You can go if state one dot equals um, Oregon. Okay, so by the way, this is going to produce a false. Which we, I didn't, I should have mentioned that. Um, okay, so this right here, this would, is going to say false. This one right here, if state one equals Oregon, is Arizona match? Does that match Oregon? No, that's false as well. And one other thing that you can use is you can go if, and you can write, you could actually write a string right here and say Oregon. Um, dot equals um, state one. All right. So that's another way that you can write this code for comparing strings. And that's all there is. So make sure that you um, take pictures of this, of your notes, and submit that on Canvas.